Benedict Yu. I'm a um, art practitioner based between Singapore and Taiwan. <laughs> so um, I know some of the people who attend this uh, webinar, um, probably some of you guys already know me for a period of time. So I just want to share a little bit of uh, small stories about, you know, how things came about. Um, because uh, like everyone else, I didn't start doing art because, you know, I can draw like a really amazing flower or bird when I was young. I was just like the same with everyone else where I just enjoy doing art and to draw and to just put in colors. So this is a small drawing that I did when I was um, uh, about five to seven years old. And then um, this is actually, I did these during church. Uh, my dad is currently on the webinar <laughs> and um, he's a preacher. So he will preach on the stage while I will just be drawing randomly um, downstairs. Uh, I mean, not downstairs, but like at the lower parts of the, the service with everyone. And then you can see that I have this um, huge fly, like kind of like a looking, it's, it's a bit gigantic and there's a small little church building there. So I don't know what's going on with my head when I was young, but I just remember that I couldn't sit still. So only by doing art, I'm able to sit still and to concentrate in class or the church service. So I'll just show you guys a big jump of what I have been doing recently. So my art has actually evolved over the times. And this is actually my paintings um, that I did for last year during my solo exhibition at Chimes, um, one of the restaurants called Coriander Leaf. So over here, you can see that my art forms uh, evolved into various kind of styles. So the specific style that I um, venture into is called surrealist automatism. This is where a painter kind of let go of your consciousness and to let your subconscious to lead your body and your hands to paint out beautiful strokes uh, on its own. And then later on, you can formulate your own vision or the kind of shapes or the kind of objects that, that, um, that you have in mind. So it's a playful kind of idea between the consciousness and subconscious. And I actually do a lot of artworks that comment on some political and social um, issues as well. So I think one big part about being an artist is to be authentic of yourself, to use this as a voice, to voice out the concerns or things that you have seen around you. So for example, on the left side, you'll see there are two different versions. This is called Wang Zicheng Long. And this is called Wang Nu Chen Feng. So in Asia society, these uh, two Chinese idioms uh, means hoping your son to turn to a dragon. And the other one is hoping your daughter to turn to the phoenix. So everyone knows that dragon and phoenix are two legendary figures in, um, in the Chinese kind of a history. So what I did over here is to comment on that kind of a societal parental expectations over the younger generations. So through my texts and my works uh, with uh, neon lights, with newspapers, um, with paintings, they are able to reflect about my own unique views about the society. And I also do a little, uh, a little bit of, uh, of the digital artworks. You guys can see that on the left side, these are actually made um, with uh, Cinema 40. And then on the right, in the middle, these are made with um, Game Engine. Um, it's actually a game that, that um, I worked on together with Steam. Um, the game is called Occupy White Walls. And I kind of work with the designers in, uh, in the States and in the US to kind of like, you know, put in my artworks into this virtual space. And so I venture a little bit into the digital realm as well. Then later on, I actually stretched myself into other fields like theaters. And also I did a huge mirror uh, at the um, Grid Shopping Mall, which is like around um, the Cathay Shopping Mall. And so on the right, I also did like a theater shows in uh, Singapore as well. And currently I have a project at the Garden by the Bay uh, as mentioned by uh, Irene earlier. So this is my current exhibition at um, the, with the 29 rooms. Um, this is by Vice Media. So this current exhibition will be there all the way until 16th of um, April. So if 
you guys you know want to see more of my works installations you guys can definitely check that out and for a few of my upcoming projects, so I will be representing my school. So I'm, I'm still a student um, at LaSalle College of the Arts, and I'll be going um, to Bangkok for Answer Lab, where I will be actually um, talking and chatting with some of the, the arts and cultural workers in Bangkok and Thailand, and to see kind of how they um, sustain their own practices and also how they fund their own projects. Because I think in Southeast Asia, this is a very unique landscape where these kind of issues and topics should be discussed and explored and also like what we are exploring today in this webinar as well and so for March um, 25th I'll be actually having my presentation about my um, current research on folkloristic ontology um, you guys don't have to know what is that it's very complicated um, but um, I have some other art ideas and concepts that I'm focusing on. So March 25th, I'll be presenting this idea together with my other Japanese artist friend in, uh, in Japan. And then from June to September, I'll actually take a short art residency in Berlin, where I will be um, doing up my art uh, practices and research on just now the, the topic that I mentioned, which is folkloristic ontology. So um, I kind of want to share with everyone a little bit about, um, I went a different route than most of the visual artists. Um, as you guys can see that I actually have um, a bit more um, kind of diverse um, disciplines in not just painting, but I actually stretch myself into different fields. So I think one of the things that many painters face is that they think they can only go through the route of let's say galleries, and then go to the idea of museum. That is the dream of every artist that they want to be shown in the big, big space and be represented by a gallery and to be, you know, to get that established um, kind of recognition from museum. But what I did um, is that I actually found another route, which I knew um, that um, architect firms will probably need more of my paintings than the gallery because gallery is very selective and then they only select a specific artist they want to invest all their time and effort to 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 nurture the artist right so um i kind of research about what need paintings the most like what kind of companies what kind of organizations and i realized that architect firms um during the past um you know when they are actively building houses that is the best time for them to put in paintings and stuff so I start to kind of like engage with them and I realized that they actually help me in my art career a lot more than what the gallery can offer so I list out three points over here as you can see so the first thing is about space because you know an architect firm there's a lot more space for you to place your artworks it's kind of um, different from the gallery where they have different artists on rotation um, artists probably have to take about a whole year to prepare for a show but in architects, uh, architect firms, architecture firms, they actually need uh, paintings fast to uh, quickly, um, in, a, in a way, it's, it's to decorate the space, but at the same time to bring a very strong narrative and stories to their potential um, buyers of their house or their flats. And that became a very good place where I can leverage on and the second part it's events so you know gallery they only have one opening maybe every three months because of one exhibition but if you think about how often an architect firms would host events your visibility and your exposure is a lot more effective than in a gallery space this is kind of the part that i think a lot of the painters should should look into the visibility, the exposure, but at the same time, are these audience the audience that can afford your works? And they would actually take that money out and to buy your artwork. That is very, very crucial. So I feel like, you know, if a person can buy a house, then most probably they buy my paintings too. And that's where it kind of kickstart my career. And that leads to the third point. Yes, the collector part, because um, 
if a person is buying a house, not just because of, you know, oh, I want a place to stay, sometimes they'll look into having a meaningful kind of story about their own house as well. So they probably want to hang one or two paintings that represent, let's say, it's about their family, it's about um, their view about the world, or just something they, they generally enjoyed. So to me, I feel like architecture firms become a very important um, alternative for the painters. And so for here, I kind of want to throw that question to all the audience where you guys should also think about maybe the resources around you that you can leverage on, not just going through the route of gallery and museum. So for example, for Meet Arts, they have like the online platforms where there's more visibility. And then with the UX UI design, you know, they can easily um, find the artworks that they want. Your visibility will also be shown um, to broader nets of audiences as well. So the second part about the an artist's journey that is very crucial is about mentorship because um, all along my artistic life and my trajectory and journey, um, it's not just me alone. I often talk to um, my professors, my lecturers, uh, sometimes just even my friends or also my juniors to kind of hear the different viewpoints. So when I often present myself in high school or like in my, um, you know, the schools I used to study at, I'm able to actually improve a lot more, not just about my confidence, my sharing, but I'm able to know more about what I actually want to do with my art and my career. And you will know that, oh, maybe this is not the direction that I want to go to after a sharing. And so I have presented myself, um, not just in schools, but also to adults, as well as to the architecture firms, um, and also on the top, um, sorry, bottom left corner, that is to at the Marina Bay Sands as well. So the third kind of points that I want to share with everyone is that you need to open to possibilities because nowadays um, visual artists face the problem of first is saturated. Second of all, um, many people can paint and do things that you do as well. But what makes you stand out or what makes you um, really important is about your flexibility adaptability, but the core of it is your authenticity. And at first, I didn't understand how to find my authenticity. So I had to take a route of where I do all the different kind of art forms from fashion to fine arts to theater to technology. I, I went a whole entire loop, like a whole round of all the different disciplines. And then I realized that, okay, this is something that I want to venture into. And it took me about five to six years of journey but I think it's very important and meaningful to, to open to that possibilities in the different disciplines that you can explore in. Yeah, so a word to everyone is to stay focused, um, to stay disciplined and dream big. So in this video, you can see that I will, I'm folding this uh, silver flowers. Uh, one of my uh, project manager, <laughs> uh, she's in Korea right now, and then she's in the webinar right now. So she helped me with making the silver flowers, um, and I also we did it together. It's a very small project, but at the end of the day, this one little flower that I focused to make, it actually become a very huge installation, which is the one at Marina Bay Sand. And yeah, so these are the few, few um, tips that I want to share with the artists and later on a Q&A session can ask me more as well. Yeah, so thank you very much. And then this is an image of the, how the flowers turn out to be. And on the top uh, bottom right corner, that is my Instagram for to see more of my artworks. Yeah, thank you very much. My name is Justin Lee, Singaporean artist. I used to be a, a designer, digital designer, and then now I turn into a fine art painter. So I paint, I do design works. I also do installation as well. So the website is just right below. So you can take a screenshot if you want to, and then you can take, you can explore my website. Okay, so I'm going to do some self-introduction, my art practice, uh, community art, of course, Q&A. So my work talks very much about art and design because not just about the background. So our practice should also focus on our culture, the things that we've grown up with and the things that we know, especially when we were a kid. My inspiration is paper cutting. 
why paper cutting? Because paper cutting is something that is very, I feel is very unique. It's, it's something in the past is a treasure. And then without uh, Chinese paper cutting, there's no inspiration what, for what we see on the posters, the billboard. The message is the same. It's just setting up message to everyone. You know, those days they use paper cut, but now they use billboard, they use TV, they use social media. So it's just a different form of media to communicate with people. I think we should look into materials. So I started off as a, a graphic designer, which you can see on the right, on the left. And then you see Chinese paper cutting on the top. But the one further down, the chun, right, is actually a thick fabric. So I think it's also good to understand the other culture, which is also important because I, the environment helps us to understand our society and also the way how we want to connect them. Okay, these are the works that I did. So my work talks about education, which what are the things that I was growing up with when I was a kid. So I watched a lot of Sesame Street, which was inspired by the, the American culture. And also back to our own culture, the Samsui woman. These are the women who helped us to build all the HDB flats in the 60s. So I think I like them a lot. And I like to bring all these images back to on my canvas. And then of, of course, to show it, to the younger generation of collectors and uh, artists as well. And then I have the cook. Of course, cook talks about consumerism. The national flag, which I did so. And it's very interesting because my solo show, my very first solo show was funded by the National Art Council, but somehow we have some problem to show national icon. So we decided not to showcase the works. But of course, it was so uh, long before the opening day. So I think we should do something, not just to push boundary, but also to question about our self-identity. Oh, this is a hotel project. So as what Benedict has mentioned earlier, we should actually expose, try to expose to other ways of styling ourselves, not just canvas, not just painting for galleries, but also we can work with hotels. The interior space is very interesting. So also the Samsung woman again. So it, because it's quite well received and the Majestic Hotel is located at Chinatown. Next should be another room. So I have three rooms in total. And then I also work with Mont Blanc. This is the Mont Blanc branded consumerism kind of, what do you call that? It's a pen, right? It's a logo. So Mont Blanc is very popular for that. So it's a branded pen, a logo that we all associate with. I think art is not just about painting, museum, but it also, also talks, it also talks about, you know, how, how are we influenced uh, with the consumerism and of course the real world, the, the things that we dress, the things that we eat every day. And this is the first installation that I did for Esplanade. So I actually, I think if I'm not wrong, I was the first artist to, to work on the back, uh, on the ground area. So I love Olympics because I think Olympics is a very, branded sports and then in some way we all associated with sports and these are some of the figures figurative stuff that i did so it's about eastern icon which is the lady wearing western consumerism which is the handbag that we wear so i think by using the extreme figure which is the lady from the past you holding the the, the current and the presence of products right it creates attention it talks, it's not criticizing how the way we, we dress, but it talks about, it reflects upon the real way, the real thing that we are doing in this modern society. Of course, this you see it every day, right? So I think Singapore is a very interesting country because we are a never reconstruction city. We, today, we, we dig on the left side of the road. Tomorrow, we dig on the right side of the road. So it's like a never ending kind of process. But I think this is how Singapore how it keeps Singapore going and how we, we are like a very fast-paced kind of society. Even my friends came to see Singapore and said, wow, within a year, it changes so much. So we have to constantly to keep changing in order to catch up with the world or the, in, the kind of international scene. And I did some commercial project with Centerpoint. And this one is Will Lock Gallery, which is sort of selling some some property, I think. Uh, this is from the museum. It's a life-size print that I did on the wall. 
this is also some fun installation kind of object. So I think working with museum, not, not just purely putting nice painting on the ca nice canvas on the wall, but we can actually do quite a lot of interactive artwork, perhaps also for the young generation of people to understand what art is about and also to, to bring art closer to the people. Same thing for the interior. And this is at Changi Airport. So it's just a wood block that was carved. It was uh, printed over a piece of paper by rubbing a crayon on top of it. So the idea is very simple. We have it when we were young, right? We rub a piece of paper on the, over a coin, right? And then we have images of it. So these are the little things that we have when we were the kid. So my message to you is that always let the little kids inside you to come out and play for a while. Oh, this is the commercial project that I did with the stamps, uh, EDB 50th anniversary. So even though I'm a graphic designer and I wish, then I do not wish to do so much commercial work, but I want to do some fine art painting. But no matter how, you know, it's, it, it goes back to the real, the, the real world, which is, you know, the, 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 the commercial world that, that, that which is good also. Like, I mean, you can make money from there. So there are many ways of, getting revenue from, so not just painting on the canvas, but you can also work with, you know, a big company like EDB as well, or STB. Some put back souvenir that I did. This is at Explanade. I use this uh, recycled box material. This is also one. So it's Sa Chai Fan is something that we have in the Hawker Center. So my works really talks about the people that we see everyday life, the way we eat, the way we play. Also, this is the mirror that I did for a private house. So I think a message to all the young artists, I think painting techniques and skills are very important because once you get it, then you should, then you can continue to do whatever thing that you wish to do. You play like digital art or NFT, it's okay. But I think as an artist, you should have the basic understanding of the medium. At least you know how to paint. Or perhaps one day you can be a lecturer, you can be a, a instructor to, to teach your skills and your paintings to the next generation of young artists. Next is this a close up. This mural I did at Crate Road. So the owner likes the Lady series, which is the East Mid West. So I did it on at Crate Road. This is the close up. at Crate Road. So if you do happen to walk past at Tanjong Baga, you can take a look. Oh, this is my studio. I used to have it at Gumbana Center, but uh, somehow I decided to move back, move back my home. And one of the room becomes my computer rooms, my painting room and my study room. Oh, this is, this, this is the other view. So these are some work that I did for the, uh, the Asia Civilization Museum. I went to Japan for residency. So it's just like to space up myself and give myself more time to, to look at nature, to look at things that are around us. So after visiting Japan, right, my, my color palette start to change. My works becomes more simple, more, more, more simplified. This is the studio space. It's very interesting historical house. So I actually live, I work and I live with a chicken every day. So I'm very close to the nature. Does anyone know how, how long does it take a chicken to lay an egg? Nobody knows, right? Only when you stay with the chicken, then you know, because every day, in fact, every, I have, we have three chickens there. Then every week I pick up three eggs. So how many, days does it take a chicken to lay an egg? <laughs> Actually, it's, it's about one, one per week. So it's very interesting to live with nature. So I work with the children as well. So they are, this is a form of community art, outreach. So these are the works that they did with some uh, found fabrics, uh, recycled materials. I also work with the schools. So they use this cotton box to build houses. So I was really inspired by the way how they handle all these kind of 
material, including scissors and knife, pen knife. I also work with elderly people. I think elderly people are the one who contributed our nation, you know, in the past. So I think mingling with them, I think there's something that I experienced which is very touching. One of the one of the elderly even told me that they have never hold a pencil in their life. They don't even have, which means they don't even go to school. They cannot afford to go to school. So when they come to my class and they're holding the color pencil, they almost feel so emotional and they have a chance to express themselves the way they want to be. I think it's very meaningful to work with these, these elderly community people. Of course, the talk back that they make, they did outreach. How, how do we, how can we invite the old people to come out of their house so that they mingle around with each other, so they talk to each other, so they wouldn't feel so, so bored when they were at home. So these are the elderly people. They are like as old as 88 years old. Also, this one is from the, I uh, also work with uh, Singapore, Singapore Association of Mental Health. So these are also another group of amazing people. Just for your info, right, the clients that I work with, right, they are people who are like high flyers, like doctors, pilots, teachers, principals, and of course, ordinary people. So my message to everyone is, don't be too stressed. So once you over, you over stress, you will end up with something that you never think of. So enjoy your life and relax and do a little bit more art meditation. So this auntie, I think he's almost like 90 years old. Look at the white hair she has. But she is so enthusiastic about the way, I mean, the things that she wants to do. Oh, sorry, this one. Oh, yes. And then the above one is also in Japan, the kids. Uh, this one is with uh, SGH. This one was many years ago. So it's, it's to encourage cancer patients who are really uh, in the midst of recovery. So the message is, I can do it. You know, I can, I can go back to have my favorite laksa after the operation. So it's a very meaningful project. To work with them and all the text is contributed contributed by the patients oh this is the current mrt project at maxwell road so please do visit when you happen to uh, to be there so ming yi si tian talks about the way that we eat the things that we eat so this entrance is actually linked to maxwell which talks about food So there was one cloud that linked to the temple because cloud associated with, you know, religious or God. Uh, this is my favorite quotes. We all know that art is not about the truth. Art is a lie to make us realize the truth. And this is by Picasso. So I think it's very interesting. What you see in my, on my painting is not actually what you see in everyday life. It's, it's just a hidden message. Or perhaps it is an alternative way to look at the society through the eyes of the artists. So my work talks about culture, communication, and connections. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Justin. So we can move on to the fireside chat. Before we uh, do the q and I, I just, uh, I'm very inspired by the sharing from both of Mandanik and also Justin. Like, you, know, you, you guys have gone really far. Like, I think for some, Artists, they are still trying to, some artists that we met, they are still trying to establish an identity of their artworks. So some of them, they try copying other artists' artworks, you know, and try to discover their style or their identity. Do you have any advice that, or how do you, how do you, how, how do you, how can they, through your journey, right, how do you discover your style? If you can share with us, anything you want to go first? I'll see you, Justin. Do you want to share first, or? Okay, I think uh we need time to un. Oh, sorry, I'll I'll talk first. I think we need a lot of time, uh, or perhaps uh, 
some question to ask about ourselves, what art is about. Lah. So of course, uh, as an artist or even every artist has different definition of uh, uh, the notion of art or the notion of artist. So I think to me, uh, art really connects to people and it's also an, an alternative ways to, to express ourselves. I think there's no actual words or the, the best word to describe certain things. I think art is always the one that replaces the text, which is the language. Lah. So I think language is never, never uh, an, an exact description of what you want to tell about the things that you want to tell to others. So I think through looking at the paintings, it gives you, a, a, it gives you many words, right? So a, a, a painting paints a thousand words. This is, this is what it means, right? So of course, hundred of us looking at one painting give you hundred meanings. So they are all different. At the end of the day, it's actually based on the, that person who is looking at the artwork, which is the background, his culture, his education, or even his status. So all this counts. So I wouldn't say that looking at one artwork, oh, this is the best, because it's, it's just credited by someone else, which end of the day is a system. So if you understand a system, you will understand how things work. If you ask a museum, museum has its own systems, the same as academic schools. The art school have its own systems. Of course, people who are looking at things that are just traditional practice also have another system. So there's no right or wrong at the end of the day. So I think at the end of the day, if you have the passion of making art and to connect people, I think that is the, the best thing for the role of, as an artist. Thank you. Yeah, um, I will share a little bit about, um, you know, like my, my process in the past, because I started off like what Irene sh um, just shared about, you know, imitating, copying the artworks and all. I also start off from there. But I think um, one of the things is that you have to constantly, persistently and not giving up halfway to aim for something that you're really, really passionate about and you want to really know the core of it. Um, I I was really into the the idea of surrealist, uh, surrealist like the dream and all of these, and then I started to copy it's a lot. Of, but then I realized that oh, it doesn't reflect exactly what um you know I want. Uh, if I keep on constantly copy, so I start to tweak a little bit left and right about the different style. How about if I change a little bit here and there? But that took me about like one to two years to really, um, you learn it at first and then you have to learn how to unlearn it uh, I think that's one thing that one of the lecturer told me about the most important thing uh, when you're doing art is that once you learn a skill so once you learn um, you know how to paint very beautifully and all the moment you learn that you want to quickly unlearn it by unlearning it you get to absorb in new stuff and you get to see things in a different side um, I think this is one of it and second of for, I think what Justin shared just now when he went to the art residency uh, I think it also changed the way he looked at art and also you know like the simplified version or you know to to tone down or to minimize specific kind of design principles or visual principles um, I, I didn't mention in my slides but one of the important thing is art residencies our residencies there are about 5,000 of them across the world a lot of artists just thought that oh I just need to do art go to gallery and then go to museum. But artists can also go to these art uh, artist residencies where they can explore uh, the art and the culture and a different kind of way of looking at art with different countries and different people. So, you know, for the artists that are in this webinar, you guys can like always research about, you know, what are the different artists residencies available, the different terms and condition. And when you're there, you actually get to explore different stuff out of your comfort zone. And that's where you learn the most and you can develop your art. Yeah. So the, the next question that we people are very interested to know is that how do you network? Because most of the artists, they say that they are rather introverts. So they, they, they are very shy people. They don't know how to network. And that's what both of us are sharing, that networking is very important to be able to make, make the pathway to get your works exhibited. So maybe can, can you share a little bit of any advice for people who 
you know, uh, introverts, how do you, what kind of forums can they network to be able well, to I, oh. profile themselves? Well, I mean, based on my experience, I think artists are not shy. It's only that they didn't meet the right people to talk to. Of course, artists are also not so direct. Actually, like, artists have very good ears. It's just that they don't, when they don't talk right, they are, they are actually thinking of something and they are digesting. I mean, based on my experience, uh, but I, I cannot talk for all, but this is what I feel as an artist. Uh. Thank you. Yeah, um, for my side, I think um, to me, right, uh, because currently I'm still a student, so I speak in a perspective of student. So like, for example, when I got into LaSalle, and that's where I get to meet Justin and also um, other lecturers and all, I think one very important thing is that um, what the lecturers always say, it's like uh, to be out of your comfort zone. And I initially couldn't really articulate my art practices and I couldn't really, I wasn't confident enough and all. But then, you know, I just uh, try to make friends with um, different uh, classes and all. Like, you know, you don't, you don't have to like think, oh, you know, in the future they will be in your fine arts course or whatever course. But what I did is that I just do what I love and that become my strongest language like visual become my strongest language uh, when I share it with other people. And then through these, um, when they look at my works and I chat with them um, in school, in school and, um, you know, conversation will, will kickstart when you find the right person to, to talk to, just like what Justin said. Um, yeah, there are like probably like a hundred people that I talk to, only two people that is interested to know more, a little bit deeper about your works. And then, you know, I start to open up, chat with them more and more. And then at the end of the day, they they graduated and they went to different industries. So one person went to media, one person went to fashion. And then after two, three years, you know, they came back to media. Hey Ben, you know, um, there's something that our fashion uh, kind of designers want to engage to try out some visual works and arts uh, are interested to, to try out together um, so you know sometimes these kind of um, different fields to me it's the different fields and to to really make friends with sincerity and with with you know like to, to be proud of what you do and that will actually bring you quite quite far um, yeah yeah that's what I, what I want to share yeah so, so Benedict you were sharing about that you approach in, uh, those architecture firms you know, you co-work with them. So it's in the sense that, uh, is, is it through referral from friends or how do you get into the inroads of architecture firms? Um, I think there are two important parts. One of it is to be thick face and to show, you know, your works and all, go around and ask. Um, a lot of my friends did that and it works. The thing is that, People thought that, oh, you know, they won't appreciate my works and all. They never try. They they self-censor their own passion. So a lot of times it's you just thick face go and just show, you know, this is my work. If you're interested, please, you know, showcase my work here just for a short period of time. I just want to see how it's like. Sometimes you place it there. The person, they're like, ah, uh, maybe nothing will happen. And then like a, a buyer of the flat comes and says, like, oh, this is nice. I, I want I want this whole space, including all the artworks. So sometimes it's just first being thick face. Uh, second of all is to, like what I said, to be very focused on creating your artworks and all. And at the same time, treat like, you know, the friends around you, your friends family members with sincerity and honesty and to really you know like talk to them um, and make friends so actually this architecture firm was uh, referred by my dad um, who initially probably didn't want to support my dream to become an artist but then eventually you know he was like he was just like hey you know you know my son is doing art and then uh, see something that he's doing and then you know just by very simple referral and also because it's someone that it's your friends so I think a lot of time artists forgot all the resources they have around them it's like you know sometimes it's your family members they might know some people that just you know just try out just be thick face and to go ask for for that so I, I was quite thick face and I um I had my first solo show in school in my high school, um, nobody have ever done a solo show in high school, in, in, in my high school. And 
I try it and then it was a big hit because like many artworks were sold and then architectural firms, they also see the artworks there. And they're like, you know, you can have your work show in our space because we need it. So sometimes a lot of opportunities come unexpected. It's just whether you want to be out there to, to, to share about what you like or not. Yeah. Can I just add on something? That it comes straight to my mind. Uh, I think art, don't see art as something very special. But art is just like any ordinary occupation. All you need is to have to work hard. There's nothing dropped down from the skies. There's nothing free. You have to work very hard. We all work very hard, irregardless of what occupation that you are holding on. So the thing is work hard. As you say, thick skin, right? You have to do all the way to, you know, that's, if you need something desperately, you have to go all the way to it. But ask yourself, are you ready for that job or that role? You know, a lot of people, they just half past six or, you know, pan tong sui, right? You know, those are the things that, that, that I think it shouldn't be. La. So that's, that's the reason why uh, as a mature student, I went back to the art school at the age of 28. So I think learning education is very important because you learn the right way before you do the wrong way. <laughs> so this is my, this is my call. La. So any occupation is the same. And don't talk about, I, I mean, I, 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 I'm not talking too much about money because if I want to be rich, I wouldn't want to be an artist. I can go and sell insurance or buy or sell property. I can, make, I can make a lot of money. Trust me, I'm a good salesman. But I think art is a passion that I would like to. And I think I only live once in my life. So I think I should let myself to get in touch with art and to understand more what art is about. Thank you so much. Justine, we're just curious when we share, share your artworks, you seem to have a lot of commission works with the government agencies like EDB, you know, with all this. So, like, how do you get the kind of inroads through, uh, to all these agencies? As, as I say, right, all you need to do is to get prepared and you work very hard for it. There are a lot of eyes watching on you. Even though you are doing other careers, it's the same thing. There are people watching you. They are all there looking out for you. So what I, my, my, my message to everyone is you have to prepare for yourself. When you get ready, all the opportunity will come. It's just a matter of how are you going to take it and handle it. Lah. So I'm, of course, I'm very fortunate. Lah. People come and talk to me and, uh, and of course, they give me jobs. Lah. I call this jobs. Lah. So in return, I, I make some money. Lah. But uh, it will not be there forever. Lah. So I'm, I'm very grateful that I have went through all these uh, up and down, good and bad. Uh, of course, those bad things, nobody knows, right? Those poor things, those very miserable days, nobody knows. You know, sometimes we have even $10 and we can't decide whether we want to buy a bread or we want to buy art material, that kind of stuff. So we also went through all the bad times and those uh, kind of downtime. So I think if you are prepared for yourself physically and mentally, I think uh, the opportunity the opportunity will always be waiting for you. Thanks for your sharing. So Thank I you. open the floor to Q&A from the oh, participants. Do you have any questions you'd like to ask? You can type in the group chat. Or, okay, there's a question from Chai Hui. He wants to know how Benedict lets go of your consciousness to paint your artworks. Okay, Um. so... About this actually is a, li a little bit involved with my own um, belief and my practice. So uh, I'm a Christian and what I do is that I pray. So what I told my dad is that um, for me, I cannot just close my eyes and hold my hands there because I cannot sit still, right? So what I do, I paint. So my form of prayer is through paint. So when I paint, um, I think when a person is painting, um, inevitably you will be going through a different zone you'll be um, thinking about different stuff but it's actually a very relaxing therapeutic process right or sometimes it's not maybe something is like you want to release your anger your very strong emotion onto the canvas you want to trans transfer that energy so I think um, it's kind of similar to when you're doing um, crochet or you're doing any sort of craft um, it, it, it went into the state of like you know you're not in your usual conscious thoughts about oh I need to get this thing I need to get 
get that thing. You're just in this zone. So for me, um, what brings me to the unconsciousness is through first music. Um, second of all I know it sounds very funny and crazy and all but it's like through my communication with uh, the God that I believe yeah so um, it's through these two different kind of uh, ways of um, mechanism um, it will help me to go into that state it's kind of like a state of trance um, I think all the artists have their own kind of states of um, when they go into the, the state of trance they have their own specific mechanism sometimes it's the smell sometimes you put the ionizer you have like the lavender smell and then you can go into that state yeah so um, this is more technical yeah but I, I hope this explains thank you how about Justin? You also want to hear how uh, how you let loose and this and do your paintings. Uh, it's very close to what Benedict just said. Uh, I think it's about uh forgetting about who you are when when you're doing the painting. Even you're writing a song or you're writing a poem or you like write doing a script, it's the same thing. You know, you just forget about yourself for a moment, just paint, just enjoy the moment of painting. Don't. Don't think too much. If the more you think, you are not going to paint. So if you want to paint, just paint. You want to sing, just sing. You know. You want to eat something, just eat. So it's the the what is called that? the 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 one moment of calling lah that asks you to do just do it. So never be like never too shy to paint. Never say oh I'm too young, I'm too old for this and that. So once you say you are, you know what you say is what you are lah. So I guess uh, paint. Of course we are all emotional creatures, right? Especially at night, right? So sometimes I paint, then I, I have a glass of wine and I paint, and then I, sometimes I get very emotional. Sometimes I think about the past, then I think about the future. So there's a lot of things that you 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 start to engage when you are in a mood of that kind of uh, what do you call that? It's a it's a very different zone. It's a very interesting zone. It's almost like a dream. I I, I don't know how to explain. So only my artworks will tell you about what I'm trying to uh, talk about, lah. So yeah, I'm not sure that will answer your question or not. Thanks, 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 Justin and Benedict. Is there any other questions that you would like to ask? Oh, before I uh, can I say something? Oh, I, I'm having a solo coming uh in April, on the 19th. It's one of the Saturday. I think it's 19 April, or 13 April. Sorry, 13 April. So in the Eye Precision uh, Gallery, next to Hard Rock Cafe, so it's on, you can drop down, uh, you can note down, uh, it's April 13th, uh, Eye Precision. But I'll put it in a group chat with a canvas. So all are welcome. Thank you. Okay. So I think maybe I will just end with a final question that, what do you think, what, what, do you think the government can do to rejuvenate our art sector? To bring our artists to the global platform? Is there any thoughts that you have on this? I think, I think of course, we have a National Art Council. I'm not sure everyone knows about it, but National Art Council uh, do help us a lot in some way. Lah. Of course, I did have scholarship from, <laughs> from National Art Council. And even though I'm not sure about uh, the rest of the artists, but when I travel, I ask about the other artists from, from the foreign country. Do they have an art council? They say no. So, so I feel also very fortunate to have an art council. I wouldn't say they do everything the best. There's nothing the best to suit everyone. So we, are, we have rooms for improvement. Now. So I think uh, the only way to help ourselves is ourselves. You know, we have to do it ourselves first. As I say, make sure you are prepared before the opportunity comes. Now. So yeah, this is my my belief. What about Benedict? What do you like to share? Yeah, I think uh there are two two elements. I think one is what Justin shared previously about you know the continuity and doing all and then people are watching you. No, no matter what, people are always watching you. Um, they know you exist, you're doing your work. So it's very important for consistency as an artist. The artist consistently uh, to do what he or she loves and to stick true to, to doing that um, 
one of the times it will opportunities will come this one thing i think second thing um i'm gonna bring in my my role as a arts management student that's what i'm studying right now um is that i think um in my own analysis i think nac um singapore is one of the very few countries across the whole entire globe that will give out grants and all these support systems to art practitioners if you look at other southeast asian countries they don't do that but I think Singapore is a very a kind of a central kind of a NAC, like what Justin shared about to give the grants. But I think another important thing about this is that um, I think either in Malaysia or in the Philippines, um, how they give out grants, it's actually the NAC has the money, but they appoint different agencies uh, across the country to actually work with the local communal areas of the ecosystems to give out the supports that they actually need. Or else, if it's too centralized into like, let's say NAC, then people will need to look into the excellency or the kind of the very prestigious kind of a status of an artist, and then he or she might get that grants or scholarships and all so i think one of the things that i see i think it's the philippines that they have been doing this kind of more appointing agencies in different kind of communal spaces so it's more spread out it's more equal so i think i hope that is something that i can see in in singapore maybe in like you know different heartland zones and different areas around the communities where these things can be um you know like uh, uh, decided and judged not by the governmental bodies but by the community community itself. I think that will be a very powerful kind of mechanism that will help to proactively promote uh, the arts that the community people actually really cherish about. Yeah, so that's just uh, my viewpoints. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your sharing both Benedict and Justine and really learned a lot today for all of us. And I also hope that, the, as I mentioned, that they are sharing will inspire all the artists to just try, strive harder, as what they have said, work hard and make yourself known. Eventually, there will be people to appreciate your work. So we will end here. And thank you for attending, all of you. And I wish you a good weekend. Thank you so thank much. You.